Hey everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutorial.com. Wanted to come in and do a video for you. You know, it's almost Shavuot. And I'm doing this video because I get so many questions during this time of year about the timing of Shavuot, which you may have, if you're not familiar with Shavuot, it's also called Pentecost in your New Testament. And so people who are unfamiliar with this want to know about it. They say, hey, you know, this person over here is celebrating Shavuot this day, and you haven't celebrated Shavuot yet. Why are you guys doing it certain days, different days? I don't understand, you know. Help me understand this better. Listen, let me just begin it this way, because this is one of those things that people get really heated over, and they, they get up in arms and argumentative and angry over something I, I don't think they should. And uh, I'm not going to get angry with somebody because they do something different than me. I, I have definite scriptural backing of how I do things because I really try to study and read my Bible. I don't just do what other people do. I go out and I investigate things. And so I know there are people out there who think I'm wrong, and that's fine. Um, but when you come to me and ask, I'm going to have specific reasons why I do something, and it's backed up with scripture. Okay, scripture. And so, uh, and they, I, I know they too have their things that they back up with scripture. Um, and some of them I think are wrong on how they interpret that scripture. And that's fine. Again, we can still be friends. I have lots of people who do things differently than me, especially uh, on calculating the new month and the new year. And we are still friends and we can still eat and, and drink together and, and be happy and, and just everything be good. So uh, let's just start that way. Okay. Uh, um, how do I determine... Shavu. How do I determine the new month? First of all, I do conjunction, and we can do that in a whole other video on how I do conjunction uh, and how I determine conjunction without any computers or anything like that. It's very simple. Um, but uh, Shavuot, I'm doing Shavuot this coming Sunday. Um, it's going to be, let's, let me see my calendar here. It's a number day. Uh, it's going to be um, uh, the 8th. June 8th, and there's gonna be, there's some people coming over. I got people coming over start to camp tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna we have a big campsite set up, and uh, um, people are gonna show up here, and we're gonna roast the lamb um, on Sunday. And we're gonna have a big uh, Shabbat meeting and and uh, Bible study on Shabbat uh, on the seventh. And so uh, how we do P uh, Pentecost Shavuot here is on the day the morrow after the Sabbath during Passover. Uh, you go back 50 days. And you look during the time of Passover, and how I calculate it is the morrow after the weekly Shabbat. And I'm going to go through some clear scripture on why and how I calculate it that way. Okay, so just stick with me here. Just, just stick. With, I know you know you're like, oh, you're already turning me off. Just stick with me here and let me plead my case. Okay, and so this is how I do it. Passover comes. As soon as Passover comes, the very next day when the sun goes down, it's a high Sabbath, and that high Sabbath in your scripture is is detailed in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, verse 7, And the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Okay, so that's the first day after Passover. In the first day, the first and seventh day, are holy convocations. What the Hebrew word is for those days is mikra. Mikra. That's the Hebrew word, mikra. And it's a holy convocation. A convocation, okay? That's the word it's being used at. Now, if you scroll down to Leviticus 23, verse 15, And ye shall count un unto you... From the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf, that's the omer, of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. And so the word Sabbath there is used twice. Shabbat. Okay, it's saying from the morrow after the Sabbath, the Shabbat, from the day ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, that's the omer, seven Shabbats shall be complete. It's Shabbat. Okay, so it's the difference between Mikra and and Shabbat. Now, the argument is that, and this is what the Jews do today, uh, the rabbinical Judaism does today. They count from the day after Passover, that first high Sabbath, they call it a high Sabbath, even though that's not what Scripture calls it. Scripture calls it a mikra. It does not call it a high Sabbath. In the Torah, it does not. It, in the Torah, it calls it a mikra. And so that mikra, okay, that mikra, that holy convocation, is, is a day where they count it as day number one for the Omer of the count, the beginning of the 50 days leading up. And what happens is that day is always on the same day throughout the year. You're always going to count 50 days. Now, a good clue is that we know that from the spring feast, that Passover is always on the 14th. The Holy Cat, the first day is always on the 15th. And then it's, it's very clear in scripture when these things are, the, you know, the 14th, 15th. And even in the fall feast, you have the, uh, the day of trumpets, Yom Teruah, which is on day one. You have Yom Kippur, which is the day of atonement is on day 10 uh, of the seventh month. And then, uh, the day 15th also begins Sukkot. And so it, it tells you what day these things start. 
It doesn't tell you that for Shavuot. Why? It doesn't tell you there's a number of days there. It, you have to figure it out. You have to count it because the, the weekly Shabbat after Passover, because you're determining it by the new moon, is always going to be on a different day. You have to count. It's going to be different. But it's always going to be the morrow after the Sabbath. Okay, that, it tells you that. The morrow after the Sabbath. The morrow after the Sabbath would be day one, first day. And so you can count that. But it doesn't give you any, it doesn't give you what those days are uh, lined up. It's going to tell you you have to count and figure it out. And that's going to be Shavuot. That's going to be the Pentecost, what we call it in the, in the New Testament. And so you have to count the seven Sabbaths. And it says right there in verse 15, the Shabbat. Shabbat, it's very important to understand. Shabbat is different than Mikra. Shabbat, Mikra. Okay, not the same thing. It says the morrow after the Sabbath you count. The Sabbath, Shabbat. And so that's how I figure it out. That's how I do it. Um, I know there are people in, in rabbinical Judaism and there are ministries out there who do it differently. And that's fine if you want to do it that way. Uh, you're not going to convince me otherwise because uh, it says right here in verse 15, Shabbat twice. And the second time it's saying Shabbat is talking definitely about the Sabbath. And so why wouldn't it not be talking about the Sabbath on the first time in Leviticus uh, 23, 15? Shabbat is Shabbat. There is no other Shabbat but Shabbat. It's the weekly Shabbat, the morrow after Shabbat. Everyone knows when Shabbat is. Shabbat is Shabbat. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost ridiculous to have to argue at this point. But, you know, and they say, well, the Pharisees in Yeshua's time did it this way. And the Sadducees did it this way. And, and I, I'll side with the Pharisees. And it's just ridiculous anyway of an argument because, I mean, Yeshua, his whole time here was arguing about the traditions and doctrines of man that the Pharisees were following. So why? Uh, it's just whatever. Hey, listen, you know, if, if you guys want to do it that way, fine because here's the, here's the bottom line folks i think that when our messiah comes back he is going to set us all straight on a number of things and we're all going to find out that we're all wrong on a number of things and we're going to be we're, torah will go out to the nations from the mouths of our messiah the one likened unto moses and he will set us straight and we'll know exactly what the torah says and we'll do what the torah says according to our messiah and to, according to our king. And so what I am waiting for is that day and we'll all have, we'll all be on the same page. So I don't get up in arms about people uh, doing things on different days. We're all waiting for that time. And I believe when a greater exodus happens, this greater exodus is going to be, uh, incense are going to be set up amongst the nations. And we are going to see, I believe, pillars of fire everywhere. And we're going to be regathered uh, just like the first exodus. And we're going to come home. And I'm waiting for that day. And so we can all be on different pages till then because at some point we're all going to be on the same page. Uh, but here's the deal. We all have the heart and desire to do want to do what's right. We've gone back to the Torah. We've gone back to the Father's Word. And we're trying to figure out the best way we know how to keep those commandments. And that's when the Father, the Father of the children, looks at his children and says, oh, Here are my kids. They're, doing, they're trying to do the best they can to do what I, what I tell them to do. What father gets angry at their children for at least trying with, with a, a heart that's in the right place to, to want to please the father? No, don't, no father gets angry for a kid who's truly trying. You know, so that's the same with our father. He's try, he sees his children trying their best, and he's going to regather us, and, and, and we're all going to be on the same page again. So that's, that's how we celebrate Shavuot here. We're getting ready to celebrate the morrow after the Sabbath. We've counted 50 days. Uh, now, in the past, I've done an Omer chart on my website. I did not do one this year because there's just so much. I mean, it seems like in the last year, you've got the lunar Sabbatarians out there. You've got you've got the, uh, the, the Pharisaical Torah keepers who are doing the Hillel calendar. You've got you know, the people who are doing the calendar according to what I do. Um, you've got uh, uh, the Equinox people, and it's just a whole mess. You know, it's like I could do a calendar but and put it on my website, but everyone's going to argue and fight over it anyway. So I may edit it to just remove the dates on it and just you can count the Omer yourself. I don't know. Next year, I'll do one. This year, I didn't. You can look up the old calendar, the Omer calendars, by going to my website, going on the search option and just typing in Omer. It'll come up. Uh, but I didn't do one this year, and I'll do one next year, I think. Uh, but anyway... Shavuot's almost here. We're getting ready to celebrate. We're going to roast a lamb. We're going to celebrate. We're going to get excited about what happened during the times of Moses when the Torah came down from the mountain and, and then the time of our Messiah when the Holy Spirit was put in our and the Torah was written on our hearts and in our minds. And, and that's, that's something to get excited about. We're going to get excited about this and, and we're going to celebrate. So I hope you're doing that too. 
if you don't know what Shavuot is, it's Pentecost, uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 2. Uh, the disciples are keeping it, which also, also proves they were keeping the Torah and keeping Passover because you can't keep Shavuot without keeping Passover. And and uh, and then also in the Torah, in Exodus chapter 20, when the Torah, the Ten Commandments, comes down from the mountain, uh, that is Pentecost. That is Shavuot. And we're excited about it. We'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.